The deadline to keep Bidwell Mansion from closing is fast approaching. We have the latest on the efforts to spare the state park. And close to 1,000 North State job seekers came out to a big hiring event in Reading today for the soon-to-be-open Famous Dave's Barbecue. Good evening, I'm Alan Marsden. And I'm Kira Clapper. NBC 24 Action News at 5 starts now. You're watching Action News at 5 on NBC 24. Live, local, late-breaking. National Guardsmen and their families said their goodbyes before dawn today as close to 200 troops left the Reading Airport for their first leg of their journey to Afghanistan. Action News reporter Linda Watkins-Bennett brings us more on the tearful send-off. Linda? Alan and Kara, members of the 132nd Multi-Role Bridging Company come from all over the West. Today, they left for Fort Dix, which will be their last stop before deployment to Afghanistan. The 132nd is made up of 180 men and women, all volunteers, and they've been preparing for their deployment since the orders came down a year ago. So have their families. He's third generation so far of our family that's military. And it's, um, so it's something that we understand already. And we're just really proud of him. Loading their gear and saying their farewells is all part of what they prepare for, but it is never easy. It's the pain of deployment. You know, you, you, you accept it, but you know, you're going to feel a little empty afterwards because he's not here with us. It, it'll never get easier. And all we can do is just pray that they come home safe. This company is trained to build bridges, but they've also had to train for combat with escalating violence in Afghanistan. Family members from as far away as Arizona and San Diego say it's hard not to worry. Yeah, it's really tough for my family, my, da my daughters. But like my daughter said, it's not a goodbye. It's just 12 months and it'll be back home safe to us. The wait at the airport took hours, but loved ones stayed until the last minute, putting on a brave face, not wanting to miss that last glimpse before takeoff. Maria Alvarez just married her husband three days ago. She's already having to say goodbye. If he gets a chance to see this, I just want to let him know that I love him, and I can't wait for him to come home. And for all the other members of the 132nd and their families, I'm praying for you always. The 132nd is based in Reading. Their deployment to Afghanistan is expected to last one year. Reporting for Action News, I'm Linda Watkins Bennett. Thank you, Linda. Well, there is continued violence in Afghanistan. The country's president is appealing for calm after seven people were killed during protests over the burning of Qurans at a NATO military base. In addition to seven killed, 35 others were wounded. It's the second day of protests against the burning of Qurans and other religious materials by U.S. soldiers at Bagram Air Base, just north of Kabul. The soldiers say they did not know they were burning religious materials until Afghan staffers pointed that out, and then they stopped immediately as they tried to figure out uh, exactly what they were burning. Well, the Afghan Interior Ministry says an investigation is underway. Activists say more than 60 people have been killed across Syria today as the president's regime continues its assault on the city of Ham. Among those killed were two Western journalists, American Marie Colvin, who worked for a British newspaper, and a French photojournalist. Both were killed when a rocket hit a makeshift media center they'd been using. The U.N. says more than 5,400 people have been killed since the Syrian uprising began 11 months ago. Meantime in Argentina, at least 49 people were killed when a packed train slammed into a barrier at the end of the line. It happened during rush hour in a busy station in Buenos Aires. More than 550 people were injured. Officials said faulty brakes may be to blame. The crash is considered one of Argentina's worst railway accidents in more than 30 years. Back here in the U.S., an eight-year-old girl who was shot at her elementary school in Washington State is in critical condition this evening. Hospital officials say the third-grade girl is undergoing surgery outside Seattle. Doctors are assessing the extent of her injury. School officials say the girl was shot in the abdomen. Authorities say a third-grade boy was being questioned and a firearm was found in the classroom. No other details about the shooting are immediately available. An Action News update now on the search for victims of the so-called speed freak killers. Officials said DNA tests identified the remains found south of Sacramento as those of 25-year-old Cindy Vanderheiden and 16-year-old Chevelle Wheeler, the two, uh, two of four deaths attributed to Wesley Sherman Tyne and Lauren Herzog. The search for remains continues in San Joaquin County. A man arrested in connection with a string of vehicle thefts in 
Glen County is arrested again after officers spotted him in another stolen car. Yesterday, sheriff's deputies who were investigating a separate incident noticed a Honda sedan parked along County Road 99 just north of Orland. They recognized the man in the car as this man, Emmanuel Mercado, and discovered that the Honda had been stolen from an Orland apartment complex. Mercado was arrested and booked into the Glen County Jail. He had posted bail just last week on February 15th after being arrested for stealing another Honda in Glen County.